This morning on News 5 this weekend, an investigation continues after an alleged road rage shooting on Interstate 81. Plus, why some Virginia lawmakers are upset over how victims of gun violence were treated when testifying before a state committee. From WCYB, this is News 5 This Weekend. Good morning and thanks for waking up with News 5 this weekend. I'm Andrew McClung at 7 a.m. here on your Sunday morning. We begin things first in the Weather Center with Kit Alexander. Kit, it is another cold Sunday morning, but another warm week ahead. So looking milder than average. Yeah, we are starting out a little bit chilly. We just got to get past these cool overnight lows. Well, starting on the upper 20s and lower 30s. But going through today, we'll see improving conditions with temperatures eventually back into the 50s. So yeah, let's take a look at current conditions right now across the area. <clears throat> Here we are on the Ashley Camera Network all across the Tri-Cities. We have most of clear skies. We have a few high-level clouds out there in Johnson City. Also, I've noticed a few contrails as well. Temperatures are in the upper 20s here in the Tri-Cities area. However, there are some variations in temperatures depending on your location. We have what we term as an inversion in place, and all that simply means is warming with height. So some of these areas and some of the higher elevation areas, the air hasn't been able to seep down quite as well as it has into the valley. So it's actually cooler in the Tri-Cities well than it is in locations like even in Bristol, for instance. The cold air hasn't really been able to seep here or on some of the other higher elevation ridges. But otherwise, this is kind of location dependent. Temperatures area wide, though, will be warming up as you're heading to church. Looking nice for the evening. Mix of sun and clouds. There will be a few clouds from time to time. Temperatures in the lower 50s for the noontime hour. Upper 50s to around 60 degrees as we head into the evening. So looking fantastic. And in fact, it looks pretty dry here. Coming up in my full forecast, I'll detail where the best chances of rain will be, well, through the next seven days. Our top story this morning, the Tennessee Highway Patrol has now identified the people involved in a road rage incident that happened on Saturday. It happened on Interstate 81 in Greene County near exit 23. The THP did not release the identities of those involved and has not yet determined if there will be any charges. The investigation was handed over to the district attorney. Virginia Republicans are crying foul over how some victims of gun violence were treated this week when testifying before a committee. Now the attorney general is getting involved. Henry Graff has the story. Thank you for your testimony. We did not ask we to must be move on. It was a contentious meeting about second look legislation. Those opposed and for the bill lining up to have their voices heard during a committee hearing this week. Some the next individual, members, please. Can I, ask, can I ask you one question? The next this, individual, please. This, I've tried this, to be fair on these rules. Minutes. But those rules are being called into question by some of those who showed up to speak, saying they traveled from across the state to only get a minute or two in front of lawmakers, if that. At times, those speaking had their microphone even muted. Under the rules, each side of the debate gets a total of six minutes to make their case, no matter how many people show up to speak. I've been sitting here for four hours today to come here and have a conversation and to walk up here with zero time on here and not be able to have one minute to talk to this committee about. I had hoped that everyone would, would work together for the six minutes so it was divided most effectively. Unfortunately, that did not occur. Thank you. House Bill 834 would allow an incarcerated person to potentially amend or shorten their sentence if they meet certain criteria. The debate even bringing out the father of Marquia Dixon. His daughter was gunned down in 2019 with three men serving time for her murder. Like, we can't be letting the criminals go. It's happening their way. They're letting criminals, what they doing? They're repeating. State Republicans claim Democrats are trying to silence them. Now the Virginia Attorney General's getting involved. He penned this letter to one of those who testified, inviting Kristen Hubbard to a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him. Jason Miara is writing, the courage it took for you to attend this hearing in hopes of having your voice heard does not go unnoticed. Where are our rights? Yeah, that gentleman gets out of jail and, and I heard, yeah, well, you can come back to the next hearing. We can, we can go through this all over again.
A proposed law in Tennessee would cut the time law enforcement has to turn over rape kits to the TBI in half. It's aimed at reducing the time it takes to get results back. The bill would cut that time from 30 days to 15. The TBI told Governor Lee in November that processing times for rape kits went from 42 weeks to 18 weeks. Their goal is to get that time down to 12 weeks. Still to come, more airstrikes in the Middle East. We'll learn the goal behind these for the U.S. military forces. And learn how the Tri-Cities community didn't let last month's weather stop them from celebrating the life of Martin Luther King Jr.